Some people might not agree with the take I'm about to make. I think Kansas is the next dynasty in college football. I have a couple of reasons for this, but Lance Leipold is secretly building a monster in Lawrence, Kansas, and within a couple of years, I think the Jayhawks will be on top of the Big 12 and potentially competing for college football playoff titles. So yeah, in today's video, I wanna talk about why I think Kansas football is next up and what my future outlook for the program looks like. The last time Kansas football really was good was 2007. At the time, their head coach was the legendary Mark Mangino, and he led the Jayhawks to the Orange Bowl in a one-loss season. Unfortunately, they lost in the border war to Missouri in the final weekend, and that cost them both a spot in the Big 12 Championship and the national title game. But it's really crazy to think that Kansas was competing for a national title at one point. Their quarterback was Todd Reesing, and the star on defense was Aqib Tlaib. Since then, Kansas has been in a little bit of trouble though. From 2010 to 2011, Turner Gill was the head coach, and then Charlie Weiss took over in 2012 through 2014. Both of those guys struggled immensely, and eventually they decided to hire David Beatty. He was the wide receivers coach under Kevin Sumlin at Texas A&M, and he took over the Jayhawks program in 2015. In four years, he went a total of six and 42, winning two Big 12 games. One of those came against Texas, and that was the nail in the coffin for Charlie Strong. After the David Beatty era, they decided to hire Les Miles from LSU, and he was there for a total of two seasons. He went 3-18 before he eventually got into some scandal and was removed from the program. So, who did they hire next? Well, they grabbed Lance Leipold. He was a national title winner at Wisconsin Whitewater, and he eventually turned around the Buffalo program in the MAG. The Kansas administration saw this guy as someone who could build a program, and Leipold happily accepted the job. In year one, the Jayhawks ended up going 2-10, and but more importantly, they were competitive. They beat Texas by way of a miracle two-point conversion and were one defensive stop away from potentially beating Oklahoma. The Jayhawks were much more competitive in 2021, and because of a couple of players, it looks like they could be a breakout team in 2022. Towards the end of the 2021 season, we saw the rise of Jalen Daniels. He was a three-star quarterback from California in the class of 2020, and after losing the starting quarterback job to Jason Bean in the first couple weeks, he took over and burnt his red shirt. He made Kansas football much more competitive and he finished with 860 yards with seven touchdowns and three more on the ground. He was a dual threat guy, and with the proper development, we could see him blow up in year three and become one of the top quarterbacks in college football. At running back, I really like what they have going on. Devin Neal was one of the top high school recruits in the state of Kansas, and he decided to stay home and play for the Jayhawks instead of going out of state. How did he do? Well, as a true freshman, he ran for 707 yards and eight touchdowns, and looks like he can be the best back since Puka Williams. They also brought in two transfers from the portal. One of them is a former four-star recruit, Sevion Morrison from Nebraska, and the other guy is a dude who I think will make an instant impact and really compete with Neil for that starting job, Kai Thomas. He was a pretty big recruit coming out of high school, and after all the injuries that happened for Minnesota last year, Thomas broke out, and it looks like Leipold is slowly stashing some good running backs. I will say I'm a little bit concerned about the wide receiver spot, but I think this team will be running the ball a lot more next year than passing. On the defensive side of the ball, they do need more talent, but I do think they have the system in place to at least stop offenses enough or they can stay in games. When you take a look at their schedule for next year, there are some very winnable games. They play Tennessee Tech in week one, and they get Duke at home in week four. Those are both games they could win, and pretty much every other game on their schedule they should be competitive in. They play on the road at Oklahoma, and while I think the Sooners will barely edge that one out, the Jayhawks have a real chance of winning that game. They should also have no issue beating Houston on the road, West Virginia on the road, Iowa State at home, and Texas at home. When I take a look at games they're probably going to lose, I think the road matchup against Baylor and the road matchup against Texas Tech are the only two definite losses on this schedule, and I think there's a potential for the team to go 10-2 next year. Not only do they have a great team, and not only is the future bright, but they've also upgraded some of their seating, and the Anderson Family Football Complex is one of the top facilities in the country, so big-time recruits are going to start piling in, and I think Kansas football is the next great team in the Big 12 once Oklahoma and Texas lose. I will say the recruiting needs to go up a bit, but they do have the prestige, the facilities, the die-hard fans, and all the potential to be the next great dynasty in college football. Yeah, you probably picked up on it, but this is one big April Fool's joke. While I do like Lance Leipold, Kansas football is likely to be the worst team in the Big 12 for quite a long time, and I do hope someday they become more competitive, but for now, they are the worst team in college.